So imagine you were given the task of figuring out which of these polynomials right here is factorable into a product of polynomials with integer coefficients. We have a degree 3, degree 4, and a degree 5 polynomial. What happens for general n? We're going to answer this question using Eisenstein's criterion. And we'll see at the end of the video a proof of a problem from the IMO 1993 that has a short answer using Eisenstein's criterion. So check out this video for figuring out how to use Eisenstein's criterion to check if the polynomial is irreducible. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar. So let's figure out which of these polynomials are irreducible and not irreducible using this thing that we talked about called Eisenstein's criterion. So let's say you're given a polynomial like this whose coefficients are integers. Eisenstein's criterion says the following. If you have a prime p that divides all of the coefficients except for the leading coefficient, and also that the square of that prime doesn't divide the constant coefficient of your polynomial, then there's no way your polynomial factors as a product of polynomials with integer coefficients. In other words, meaning that this factor, this polynomial is irreducible. We say here over the rational numbers because they're sort of equivalent. Um, there's a th lemma called Gauss's lemma that you can take a look at to uh, figure out why that's actually the case. So let's see an example of this play out to see how when we were given a complicated polynomial, we're able to establish quite quickly that that complicated polynomial can't possibly be irreducible. So here's our example polynomial, and we're going to pick the prime 3. So we notice that the prime 3 divides the constant term because the constant term is 12, but the square of 3, which is 9, doesn't divide 12 at all. Furthermore, this prime 3 divides all of the intermediate coefficients, 3, negative 9, and 18, and it doesn't divide the constant, the leading coefficient of this polynomial whatsoever. And so, by this Eisenstein's criterion, we can say this polynomial is definitively irreducible. So this is an interesting phenomenon, but like why does it work? We should figure out why it works to get a sense of like, this seems just so strange, right? Why, why does it work? We should figure that out. So let's say this polynomial actually did factor into a product of polynomials. We have this one polynomial with the gi's as the coefficient, and we have another polynomial with the hi's. And say we're given all these conditions where we have this prime that satisfies all these divisibility properties. So let's expand this product and analyze to see what we can conclude. So first of all, let's take a look at the constant term. So the constant term in the expansion is g naught h naught. So we're given that this prime p divides that constant term a naught. So p divides g naught h naught, but at the same time p squared does not divide g naught h naught, and p is a prime. So p is going to divide one of these and not the other. We'll assume without loss of generality, that p divides g naught and does not divide h naught. Okay, so let's continue by analyzing the coefficient of the x term in the expansion. We know p divides a1, so p is going to divide this x term. The x term is, if we expand, g1 times h naught plus g naught times h1. And we're given that p actually divides g naught, so p is going to divide that second term g naught h1. But p, not, p does not divide h naught, and p divides the entire expression, right? So we must have then, because that g naught h1 has a factor of p, and h naught does not, that p actually divides g1. Okay, so now if we compare the x squared coefficient, by a similar argument, we'll be able to conclude that p divides g2. And so inductively, we'll get that p divides g0, g1, g2, etc., all the way to g sub r. But this is a problem because the leading coefficient of the product is grhs, which means that p divides that leading coefficient, but we're given that p doesn't. p doesn't divide a n. So that's a contradiction, right? So there's no possible way that this polynomial p of x could have factored in the way we saw. Okay, so now let's go back to the question, which of these polynomials are actually irreducible? I want to start with the case when n is a composite number. Let's say, for example, n is 8. When n is 8, the polynomial looks like this. So we're going to clump this polynomial into um, partial sum n's. 
we're going to group clump into groups of two, and that two comes from the fact that eight is a product of two and something else. Now, if we do that, we notice that because of the way we've clumped things, we get a common factor of x plus one, with the factors being x to the sixth, x to the fourth, x squared, and one. So this gives us a general strategy for general n that are composite. If n is the product of two numbers a and b, we kind of clump a worth of terms together and descend down and get the factors. So we'll get a factor of x to the a minus 1 plus x to the a minus 2 all the way to x plus 1. And then the next factor skips every a terms. So we get a time, x to the a times b minus 1, x to the a minus 1 times b minus 1, um, etc. up to plus 1. So if you expand this, you actually get every single monomial x to the i, where i ranges from n minus 1 all the way to 0, which is exactly the thing we have. So this polynomial is reducible when n is composite. Now the question is what to do when n is prime. So we're going to rewrite our polynomial. It actually can be written as a product of the quotient of two polynomials like the following x to the n minus 1 over x minus 1. Um, and we'll make a substitution where we replace the variable x with the variable x plus 1. Now, if we call this polynomial p of x, then p of x is reducible precisely when p of x plus 1 is. You can shift the factors by 1. And the advantage of looking at p of x plus 1 is it's going to be amenable to use by Eisenstein's criterion, as we'll see in a bit. So if we write out p of x plus 1, it's going to be x plus 1 raised to the n minus 1 all over the quantity x plus 1 minus 1. And that denominator has an x in it. So you can imagine the numerator is going to have a bunch of terms, each of which have x as a factor. And so we'll be able to express this nicely as a polynomial. So let's actually expand the numerator. We can do that using the binomial theorem. The expansion will be x to the n plus n choose 1 x to the n minus 1 and then n choose 2 x to the n minus 2 etc all the way down down to n choose n minus 1 times x and the constant term goes away and we're dividing that by x so let's cancel out all the x terms we get something like this and now n itself is prime so let's analyze the coefficients the coefficients look like n choose k, and n choose k can be written as the following. It's n times n minus 1 times etc. up to n minus the quantity k plus minus 1, which is n minus k plus 1, all divided by k times k minus 1, etc. up to 1. Okay, now all of the numbers in the denominator are less than n, and n is prime. So none of them have the prime n inside of them as factors. So that product doesn't divide n. So consequently, n itself actually appears as a factor of n choose k for all of these coefficients. So n, this prime, divides all of the later coefficients, doesn't divide the constant coefficient, and n squared doesn't divide n choose n minus 1, because n choose n minus 1 is n. So, in fact, by Eisenstein's criterion, that polynomial is not factorable. So there we have it. We figured out which polynomials of the form that we have are actually irreducible. Okay, so now what we want to do is extend our understanding of Eisenstein's criterion to be able to address this IMO problem from 1993, where we'll be able to give a really, really short solution using what's called the extended Eisenstein's criterion. And that looks like the following. We're given this polynomial that we had like before, and we have a prime p. But now we're going to change the situation a little bit. The prime p is not going to divide all of the coefficients besides the leading one. We're going to have it divide up to a certain coefficient, a sub k. And then p is not going to divide the next one, a sub k plus 1. Again, p squared is not going to divide a naught. In this situation, the conclusion is that p of x will have an irreducible factor of degree greater than this k. The proof it has the same kind of argument as Eisenstein's criterion did before. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can actually use this in application with this problem from the 1993 IMO. 
So the problem asks, given this polynomial x to the n plus 5x to the n minus 1 plus 3, prove it can't be factored into the product of two non-constant polynomials with integer coefficients. So we're going to use the prime 3, which is the constant coefficient here. So 3 divides the constant coefficient, and it actually divides a bunch of the intermediate terms, a1 all the way to an minus 2, because all of these terms are actually 0. And p squared itself doesn't divide the constant coefficient. Moreover, p does not divide 5, so it doesn't divide a sub n minus 1. So by the extended Einstein's criterion, f of x has to have an irreducible factor of degree at least n minus 1. Now, f of x itself is a degree n polynomial, so it either is irreducible or has a degree n minus 1 factor, which would mean that degree n minus 1 factor is coupled with the degree 1 factor. But f doesn't have any linear factors. You can actually check if it had a linear factor, it would have a root. And the only possible integer roots it could have are plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 3 if it factored. And you can test that all of those don't work. Okay, so then we conclude this polynomial actually has to be irreducible by the extended Eisenstein's criterion. A cool, nice, short proof for this IMO problem.